Local recording has been engaged, which means that now it's time for the weekly live stream, because today is Saturday. It's actually eight minutes early, but I don't care, because I feel like doing it. Because today, we're going to continue what we did last week, which is to work on this electro -y thingy kind of sound. And the first thing that I'm doing... Just changing some of those sounds, because boy. Just boy. Alright. First one I get changed is the sneezy synth. Now this one I was trying to be cute, and I made the I made it um I detuned it by 16, which made the uh, the harmonic partials really far apart, and then I pitched it way down so that um the second harmonic is where the first harmonic was, which means that the harmonic series is now offset. And it's not to say that like they are switched positions; it actually moved down a bit, which means that the position of the higher harmonics are now wrong. But the lower ones are where they're supposed to be. It's in such a close way. Uh, it still sounds like the note, but that, that weird sort of Reese thing is happening. It's happening despite the fact, even when there's no like unison being applied to it, because it's actually, in pitch wise, not the correct position. And such. Um, so what am I going to do with this sound? This is still like the main, main sort of interesting sound. So I guess I need to make it something interesting. But not this, because man, I don't, I don't. Did I move the center? I did. So we're in D, huh? Okay, for some reason the stream decided to make noise then, despite the fact that I had it muted. So I guess that means I get to pause the track. See, this is the, um, the unison pitch spectrum window in Harmer, which indicates how much pitch is being applied to, to what unison and what uh, harmonic. As you, if, you, if you look at up here in the upper left, this is where like, the information shows up. If I mouse around, you see that it actually shows you information in uh, octaves, as opposed to like uh, hertz or something, because this is actually a per note function, where the very bottom is always going to be the fundamental tone. Now, most of the time, when you make like a super saw kind of sound, you uh, unison up, and pitch spread the entire spectrum of everything, which is fine. But sometimes the main problem gets to be that your fundamental gets all blurry and muddy. So here we can actually just be like, no, fundamental, always the same sound. And everything else can have some unison applied to it. Is I'm doing this distortion thing to it. That's what it sounds like without the distortion on top of it. Kind of that. I am okay with the sound. Uh, 
people looking at stuff. I have a, I have a base under this, right? This should be something. We should be a bit more intense, I think. Now, it's funny about the bit, the bit jam and bit crush settings on the distortion and harmor. I actually have nothing to do with bit depth, which is what the, the actual process of bit crushing is. Uh, it just kind of sounds like it when you use it in certain ways, which is why they call it that. But it's really just a way of shaping setting. And um, I, I may or may not be right in saying this, but I'm pretty sure these are all various way of shaper settings. And then these these are things, the various things you apply to it. And I might be wrong about that, but I also might be right. Of course, I have no idea this has enough bass in it because I'm, I'm listening at like 1% my normal listening volume. That's a little bit more bass, I think. <sighs> now we're getting somewhere. This guy needs to be a different type, like a note or something. That might actually be kind of cool, because the beginning, the, something you have to realize about the arrangement of all this. So the beginning of every note that happens on a beat is obscured by the side chaining because the side chaining is kind of hard. So the fact that it starts out really, really low is not going to show up much because of the side chaining. So that's why that's why you gotta. Also, it's also good to remember to remember that and not to do anything really very interesting on parts that get side chained. <laughs> EQing will have to come later because honestly, uh, again, my listening volume is so low. I'll listen to it like I did last time, like near near when I feel like I need to. I'll listen to it with the mic off so that it's not feedbacking. This note, this note though. More variation. So, like, remember, I mean, look at Wells, what's going on here. This is all largely I just copy and pasted the same thing over and over again. You can even see that it's the same thing. And so, what I, what I do now is I listen to it and I make small changes on the big parts, the, the big parts. And sometimes I might I might add in new things. And near the end of the show last time, I, I mentioned how like during big sections, like one whole one whole uh, group of four, one whole group of two, and one whole or group of eight, and then one group of sixteen. At the ends of those, there'll be bigger events of more interesting sounds or, or new sounds. But in the, in the midst of all that, the same the same general arrangement is still present. You just make various automation or differences in how they're presented to kind of change it up. I did make this one unique, right? Yeah, I did.
I'm using the Harmer reverb. I love, I love this part of remembering what I did last time. I like that better, having the square type sound. I say square type sound because it's not exactly a square, but it's somewhat to a square. <laughs> well, I want to see something fun. I was talking about uh, in the tutorial I just put up on the for the basic stuff. I mentioned these things up here, which are uh, different um, MIDI channel controllers for a sound, which doesn't necessarily matter for when you're using when you're just using one plugin and you're making the MIDI in that one plugin. However, if you want, if like we're, I'm doing a pitch slide here, and if I were to put another slide, it's going to follow one or the other. But if I wanted to slide twice, like slide the same note in two different directions, I can actually make a different uh, MIDI channel using the colors. And then if, then if I slide that, it'll slide independent. And then that'll happen. Which can be interesting. There needs to be something going on in the background over all this. Over, I mean, as well as having the actual progression progress somewhere would be nice. But in general, there needs to be more stuff vertically. We need to make more vertical uh, business. As opposed to worrying about the horizontal so far. It's murder. Uh, what do I, what do, I want to do? Something, something like just stuffy, stuff sound kind of thing. <laughs> Phaser mask. Use a pitch. And a shit ton of distortion. Cavilver. Give me Cathedral. Might be a terrible idea what I'm about to do, but we'll find out. Give me notes. Give me the right notes. Give me the sandwich. No, I don't want that. Ah, I know references too.
mean, this really just might be the dumbest thing ever, but we're going to find out. Together. Let's make some stereo. Dumbest thing ever. Okay. Actually, to give you an idea, though, where's the? It's a way to. Whoa. There's a way to. Um. Yeah. Alt. C is the one I go down to, because I'm, no, I'm in D, so that means I go down to B, B, flarp, B sharp, flat, B, B, B flat, B flarp and trapping. That's what I'm going to. Yeah. Too early. Hmm. Although I could stay in D since it'll it'll harmonize itself. Yeah. I'll save that sound for something I might do later, but uh, I don't know what I'm doing with it. No idea. What am I doing here? What is, how does this... Same progression, right? Why is it all chopped up? I must have done something last time. Or maybe I made an arrangement for the end, but it's good that it's not chopped up because I wanted to use it in one pattern. So
for something. Not 100% on what I'm doing, but um, that's for later, I guess. Hmm, you know something? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna extend this a little bit. It's already its own pattern. I don't need to do that, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> sure, why not? Vocodery thing. Could be better. Am I doing. This is just an FM patch, isn't it? <laughs> well, let's, uh, what, what am I doing? Oh my god. Uh, still not. Oh, I see what I'm doing. Okay, well, um, let's do something that I learned recently, which is to. Uh, well, first I'm gonna change this to the double. Duba curve, and then I'm gonna wave shape it. Wave shape it. Turn off the filter. Turn on wave shaping. Go to the wave shape mix, and then also make this a double curve. Because it's also makes it clean, which is something I discovered while I was doing the last How to Bass. How cool is that? Already better. Does tend to work better. Gives it some some nice little edge, but some other things I need to do need to be changed in here. setting. Hold more here, hold less there. I did actually want the opposite of that. All right. The release is fine. Tag is fine. I like that. Uh, I'm going to mess with the band panning. I don't really like to usually, but I'm going to. It's a little more of a stereo image kind of thing. I don't know how well that translates um, to uh, you guys. People talking about sausage vendor. I don't need no sausage vendor. I am the fattest sausage. As it happens, I am using a Maximus. <laughs> Lol compressor. Let's see what that sounds like at the high one. Hmm. I think I might layer this with uh, one of the other bases. Maybe this guy. That we can't hear. That dude. Because this kind of loses some of its uh, uh, edgy edginess to it. So it's D and then D to D to D. 
because I'm Carlos Mencia for a second. For the record, I don't really like Carlos Mencia. It doesn't follow the automation because it's not filtered. <laughs> uh, never mind. This guy needs. Okay, so the, the vocoder bass is one of those basses in the song. It's like one of those interesting ones. So it's like whenever you hear it, it's one of those, oh, it's really interesting kinds of sounds. So that means that whenever I hear it, it needs to be it needs to be specially a special um, pattern each time. It needs to be continue to be interesting for as long as it exists. Why not? I mean, I'd do something else. telling me things about EQ and stuff, but I can't hear any of them because I'm listening at 10% my usual volume. So I don't know if things are mud. My name is Mud. Your name is Mud. We're all named Mud. That's our name. And such. Actually, you know, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to... I'm going to... Turn the mic off, and then I'm going to turn my monitoring up at full volume so I can hear what I'm doing. So it's not going to change for you, but uh, for me, I'll be able to pick out the mixing problems, and then I'll mix, mess with them for a second. So speech will be RB.
Yo. All right. I'm okay with the mix for now. Uh, it'll probably change later, but um, this should be okay. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions about what I was just doing right then when I wasn't talking to you? I'm reading for questions. Vocodes are still too high on the high. That's probably true. That's probably true. Do you? No questions? None? <laughs> All right, well, moving on. <laughs> This could probably be less at the very end there. That was a little better. It's kind of similar to what was happening there. Now I am down A sharp here, right? And I moved that one, but it's high, isn't it? stuff let's make one really fast there it is I like that all right I think I'm gonna make an intro to this cuz you know however however much I feel about the drop uh, could all change if the intro makes you expect more than what ends up happening. So uh, I'll start doing that. I'm going to start by making things simple by making a riser. I usually make two risers. I have two types of risers that I like. The first one's an FM riser, where it starts at a low pitch, goes to a high pitch, and then it also uh, FMs itself all the way up. And uh, so I'm going to do that first. Start stupid low, like D1. These are always going to be 16 bars. And by always, I mean I intend it to take up 16 bars worth of intro. And then, uh, but sometimes, you know, I might have specific ideas about what I want to do. That may not involve it being 16 bars long, but for... Most of the time, it's going to be 16 bars. Let's put you in a channel. You're probably going to be side-chained. Turn you down a little bit, because you're going to become extraordinarily loud. end on that note. I don't even know it's going to be that note because honestly it's probably going to get fucked up by what's going to happen FM wise. So I'm going to do two. I'm going to do one that's a triangle wave and one that's a saw or I mean a swine, swine, swine wave. It's a swine wave. On and on. So volume is zero. Do I have you selected? I do. He, actually animation I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something silly. It's gonna rise. Rise. That's not what I want to do. That's what I want to do. It's gonna rise, but this one's gonna rise slower than the other one. Pitch is the other one that needs to needs to rise with it. So that's what I'm gonna do here with mod X. And how do I change the pitch? Okay, yeah, pitch LFO, pitch LFO amount is the max. There we go. Same thing with this guy. Max and pitch. 
Create a mission clip. From zero to unbelievably high. Let's watch the EQ for this one. What you just saw there is aliasing. That's when we were creating frequencies that are much, much, much higher than the, Nyqu the Nyquist frequency, which in this case is 22.505 hertz. And instead, since the information can't be processed because we're in 44k uh, sampling, it folds back on itself and, and it's supposed to keep it's supposed to keep going higher. And it goes lower, and that gets uh, aliasing. The way that you deal with this is you go into uh, the main options window. And you set a resampling type. Uh, I actually have a little bit of resampling, which means that a little bit of aliasing is being attenuated. However, not all of it. And I would need to have a lot of it in order for it to really get rid, get to, to get rid of what I'm doing with the FM stuff, because the amount of high frequency information as it go up higher, and I have the high pitch FM, and it's increasing the FM, FM amount, and also it's split phase triangle and sine wave FM. So like just ultimate craziness. But I want it to be that kind of crazy. I just don't want it to kill our ears. So, that's what's up with that. Uh, I also don't want any sub. I don't want any sub happening. Like, this this sound's probably not going to be audible until it's already, like, cr like at crazy, crazy levels. I'm going to shimmer it, because why not? I'm going to shimmer it low, though. And I'm going to kill it. I'm actually going to kill this whole track uh, near the end. Because a lot of this is going to bleed over, so I'm just going to kill it when the drop ends. I might kill it a step before, though, because sometimes it's cool to end the rise like, on a snare hit and then uh, start the drop. Golden. I'm not totally sure what that's going to look at, look like uh, at full volume, but that's fine for now. I mean, whatever else it gets to be important, we'll get sidechained. Now, the harbor riser. I'm in the automation clips for some reason. Alt, er, alt G. Uns unsorted, unsorted. There you go. Harbor riser is this one I like doing more or less the same thing, except instead of doing FM. Uh, differences, I'm going to do uh, phaser speed differences. So it's kind of like RM, actually, what I'm about to do using the phaser. So, if I play a note, uh, you see how the phaser is doing its thing. And like, like I've been talking about with the rhythmic phaser stuff, if I go on here, that's about as fast as you can get it. But if you right click this and you get your own shape, you can actually make the shape uh, different sizes. So right now the one I'm doing is going to be effectively four times as fast as the one I was doing originally. Like so. So I'm going to steadily increase speed over time. Let's put this one in the track after the harmor or the citrus riser. Now shut up citrus. Did I not put you in here? I didn't. And this is again going to be a case of that I want to hear sub frequencies. It's also going to increase in volume over time. It's probably going to be unbelievably loud up there. Where's this one? All right. But I do want to make just a huge stereo image. 
It's like a Hertz. I like a Hertz version. As such, a little bit of this. Actually, this I'm going to automate too. I'm going to start low and go crazy. Yoink. And this is probably going to end like the other one does on the snare hit. Oh yeah, uh, speed. Did I do speed already? I don't think I did. And speed. I'm going to clip increase. But increase a lot at the end, I kind of thing, because we want to be able to hear the speed increase happen over time. That's what Prism does, by the way. I can kind of hear it coming in. Oops, I broke I, I broke the animation, so let's try it again. It's quiet. That could be better. Let's make it faster. Let's actually also make it hurts. Now, now the contour of the phaser is going to be uh, angled a bit. <laughs> That's kind of neat. So we're just going to add effects to that. Like a delay. Reverb is probably fine. Let's put the reverb after all of it, yeah. Not so much diffuse. George asks, what's the difference between the Hertz and octave setting? It's mainly a weighting issue. Like you see Hertz is curving right now. The octave will go straight. I actually think I want the speed to go opposite. Let's start here. And also, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, the, the insides a little sharper. Boy, that looks weird. <laughs> I don't even have Skype open. And for real, like unless I know you and have a reason to talk to you that like I agree with, I'm probably not going to answer anyone on my Skype. Because then what would I be spending all my time doing? Talking to every single person who ever lived. I'm not that famous yet, obviously, but... It's enough that it's kind of annoying. This is still making sound. This must be Shimmer being weird. So this is both risers together. Potato King had a good idea, which was to put that dumb idea I had earlier with that stupid sound in the intro. That's not a bad. That's not a bad idea. In fact, I could probably put it in the riser too.
I guess I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with the intro. Like the general, the general plan for an intro is to uh, do do the chorus progression, but you know, lighter. You know, it's just a light version of the chorus progression, and then that's pretty much it, really. Just kind of build around it, and then you then then you break. You have a break, and then you have the big riser intro, and then um, and then the track happens. I'm gonna stop this here. Well, I can't actually, cause that would break all the other ones. So it means I'm gonna stop it like so, like so. And then I think I'm gonna change the. I was gonna do that pitch thing I was doing. Only, ha, I still have that <laughs> snare thing. Um, I'm gonna change the detune. That's gonna be good. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna go one to two, which means I wanna make two the max. So create an animation clip, and then two is gonna be copy value. I'm going to paste the value right here, and also right there. that snare hit in the back here, which I keep saying is going to happen. Alright, now I gotta I just make I should, uh, should probably do the bass antics thing and make a lead, like a melody. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make a super lay, like a omega layer lead. I'm gonna do that in a patcher, because I think that's interesting to look at. So a patcher exists. Uh, plug in citrus. I'm gonna use one of my older, super old. FM lead. Back to it's probably really loud for you guys, isn't it? My bad. Because I am not at full volume. Yes, this is from my track Dreams of Bass. This is where I originally wrote this this uh, uh, preset. I actually have the preset in my preset bank for Harmer for Connector. Where is it? Connector Gamer. Let's play them both now. It's basically a very slight uh, edit of the Harmer, like the actual factory preset uh, Gamer, which is somewhere. Where's the... Uh, it's right. You don't get tree. You don't get the tree setting for preset navigation in uh, the patcher versions of things. Effects on this, like a uh, reverb, and then yeah, I'm gonna put a delay just on the reverb, but I also want to make a dry out. So then the reverb is going to be only wet. Oh, this is the reverb. Oh, this is reverb one. Why did I do that? Uh, delete, insert, plug in, reverb two. Why do I even have that in here? Oh, that's because this isn't. This is the full list. This isn't even. That's just weird. 
So here I'm going to turn off the uh, dry. So now it's only the, now the delay is only delaying the reverb, which is kind of cool. So I'll, I'll do a uh, a low pass. Uh, post. I'll probably tweak uh, this guy. Activate, turn the resonance down a little bit, and then on the surface, let's make a, a knob. I don't actually have to do this, but I like making knobs. Yeah, all right. So there's a knob. Now I'm going to connect this to the knob, and now the, the knob will control the reverb uh, cutoff. The reverb cutoff. <laughs> Which is neat. So now it's melody. Now blindly, I'm just going to make a, a lead, a line of some kind in um, in D, and then I'll put it over the chords. We'll see how well it works, and then we'll then we'll use um, a little mess around with the presets to make them sound better because they probably won't fit. I should probably just start on the one. Offset. This might be too much. Absolutely, this isn't going to work, but I need to see if it does. Wow, that actually worked out way better than I thought it would. Like the sharp six, flat six. It's gotta come down from something. Actually, I'm on the bet that didn't sound good because of the har harmony coming from harmonizing the fifth on B here. Actually, I really kind of dig that. Mm. Patcher is for layers. I feel like I want to do more with this, though. Oh, yeah, I was going to automate the, uh, the knob. See, so the thing about this, this lead, though, is I want I wanted to start with this. I don't know how well it's going to work in the intro. I 
my dish is citrus. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to use the citrus. I said delete, not save. I didn't say save. I meant delete. All right. I'm going to do harmer, though. Yeah. All right. Uh, killed. So this is actually the same harmer preset that we just had, but I'm going to do something different with it. So there's going to be a lot of fading in, I can see. Actually, this is going to be kind of cool. I have an idea. Uh, I'm going to fade in each of these, each of these pucks individually. Uh, activate. Create animation clip. Activate. Create animation clip. And then other armor. Activate. Create automation clip. Activate. Create automation clip. Oh, yeah. So now there's four plucks. And they're going to increase at different speeds. That should be interesting. So this guy can, can go and come in real fast. This guy can come in real slow. This guy can come in medium-ish. Start at nothing. Start at nothing. I forgot I lowered the, the pitch of one, meaning that there's actually lower notes, lower tones now. Now the point of this is that it's supposed to be building underneath the ARP. Did I just, I, no I didn't. Now the uh, pluck of the ARP is actually being uh, messed with in the main chorus already. Also had a I 
It's like the filters are just ignoring, uh, are ignoring me for some reason. <laughs> Oh, it's because of... LOL. Yeah. I link them to X. Yeah. So I actually do want keyboard tracking. Alright, create that machine clip. Increase. Of an idea of what I want to do now. It's gonna be a different. Uh... <sighs> All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat. This is kind of like what I did in uh, Calibrate. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be uneven, but it'll work. Same thing with the ARP, it'll just be the first chord a bunch of times. The transition's a bit odd. I think I need, I need there just needs to be more um, business. I might put in a uh, white noise thing in there or something. I don't know. I do need one of these bases though. I think I'll use this one. This is probably this is gonna be more of the intro as well. This is kind of like right where the riser is gonna be. I might do like a a mini a mini, or I might not. I might just begin like that, go to the rise and start. I honestly don't care about intros most of the time. Uh, what's the progression? D, F, still mostly F. I kept doing a bunch of inversions and shit, so I'm not actually really sure what these even having. It looks like it goes to G. So D, F, and then G with this weird step change. Uh, D, A, C. D. Did I start here? Oh, no, I did a uh, this stuff business. Is that the same orientation? No. And then two. Like, I'm gonna get more of What I wanted to do with this was uh, chop it. Chop. That's crazily off time, but it's all right. 
This is gonna be lots of fading and filters and shit. Uh, where is, there it is. And also, yeah. So increase from nothing into something, and then now nothing. And then once this is done, I'm actually going to kill it, kill the effects at the very last second, because this is a, a main base, which is actually doing something, which means I want this to not be the case during the main track. Like so. So I'm going to kill the new effects like that. They also want to bring in the base with uh, volume. Because so, I don't want to actually, I don't want it to actually be overpowering the cleaner, lighter elements like the ARP and the lead. Stuff to happen. Boom. He. I'm gonna actually do something cool with the white noise. Like I, I mentioned, I want to do a white noise thing. So I'm gonna do that. But I'm gonna do something cool with it. Uh, this noise, right? Awesome. I can actually just make it short. It doesn't matter what note it is because it's all the same noise. Yeah. The fuck, man? What? What pattern am I in, and why is it? Oh, actually, didn't want to do that. That's what I want to do. Pattern twenty-seven. That's what I wanted. <laughs> How funny would it be if I recorded myself just pretending to be a white noise, and then? Like, I don't know, resample it. That'd be funny, I think. What, is there? Here I thought I got far enough away. Don't need to be so loud. I think I may have given away my intention by telling you that I'm going to resample something, because I'm going to. Actually, watch this. actually have a real good stuff do it 
You fool. There we go. Add one hammer. Look at that. Actually, wait, I want, um, wide hertz, or, yeah. Well, that, I think, is a cool sort of texture. But we want to make this last for a while. Maybe not 16 bars, actually, it's just intro kind of thing. So, eight, eight bars, let's do that. It's also probably monstrously loud. Oh, I turned down. We're basically gonna manually do the speed ourselves. <laughs> Suddenly birds. I have made the ocean. More or less what I wanted. Oh look, a sample.
that's the first problem with the lead doing what it's doing is that the offset actually makes you think makes you feel like the bars are count of five instead of count of four and you kind of want them to end you kind of want them to end when this the the sets do and not actually when the time happens so I gotta fix that I gotta fix that good I think I'll just do, I'll, I'll just keep, as well do. So now I'm gonna basically do this only in reverse. I'm gonna I'm gonna rise the stuff. I'm gonna I'll just use the same automation clips. I'll just cut them in half in the beginning. Or I could use them in the beginning too. I could actually have it uh, rise and come back. And why not? Let's have this guy reverse. So basically everything that's happening here only reverse. You see, it's already lengthening itself over there. I actually have no. Oh, actually, I guess it would do the same in reverse because what um what we did, it's not that the sample itself in the harmer isn't playing. We're playing it. We're moving it manually over time by automating the time function. <laughs> And yeah, the uh, white noise thing needs to die right when it happens. Otherwise, the the, ca, the cut isn't very cutty. Oh my god, am I already running out of tracks? I can also make it louder right at the very end. I'll probably do that thing where you uh, remove the lows right before the drop with a high pass and then bring it back in the last second. Of course, the impact of that is lost on me because I still am just using um, like one eighth of my normal listening volume. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut the kick. I'm going to uh, slowly bring out, but like move the low end of the kick down, up or up rather, and then that's also going to screw with the uh, side chaining because the side chaining is is more or less keeping track of the uh, the kick's low end impact. So if I break it down a little bit, not only will it accentuate the hit when it finally does actually hit, but it'll um, it won't interfere so much with the leading up sounds with the uh, the side chaining. Chords is definitely from some time, but I'm, I'm pretty sure everything else in here, except for like the lead stuff I made before here, more or less, sometimes didn't have vocoder stuff. I don't think it did. It had a lot of FM business. I might have had some vocoder stuff. I don't remember. It's been a while. I haven't actually um, 
I haven't just I've just never made chords better than that. <laughs> Cause as usual, I'm not very good at super sauce. It's not something I know how to do very well. <laughs> Something, oh, it was this there, it was the hats. So I'm also gonna cut the hats. Actually, I'm gonna cut the hats a long time ago. Let's do that. Or maybe we can keep, maybe I should have the hats in the build up or something. I have a lot of high frequency stuff going on, I necessarily need to have the hats happening. So I should get it cut all the way and stay cut until Arp still going? I thought I, I thought I killed the volume on it. Hmm. I guess not. Cut Arp. Should probably cut the lead too. Something is still bleeding. Oh, the bad idea sound. Uh, mm. If I wanted to, I could probably link all of the uh, faders to one automation clip, but I'm lazy. <sighs> Maybe the drop should hit with a chord. Yeah, I think it, I think it should. So the ones. Probably because I have the, this happening up there, so it's all like, what's the pattern? Which one's real? And then it thinks this one is. Yeah, of course, if I do that, that means this guy has to not change pitch so hard. Make a different one. So original. 
<laughs> I actually didn't even really need to make any pattern for that card, just know what I'm doing with the low end right here. channel main pattern one make a new pattern turn audible because you're not automated on you <laughs> let's pick a new one of these too this is new but that's not new weird what Do some funkiness. Do the whole opposite. That's well. That's what I'll do. Come on, points. I believe in you. I believe in your power. You can do anything. <laughs> that sounds dumb. Kill. Fuck this whole second half of the section here because it's actually the same as the first. And I like what I did the first half. And then I'll just keep this half and then make it better the second time. So let's just assume that I'm going to leave that job alone because I have to, I want to finish arranging this. I want to do. I'm going to do my favorite fill pattern ever. Ready? Favorite fill pattern. Ah! Uh, favorite fill pattern. Never made. I can even do this.
Actually, I could do that. I could engage uh, Portamento. Why not? I've done that before. That's right. I've literally never ever done sliding notes like this in a lead before. I just never felt the need to. Harmonize the second half of this. I'll make some harmonic leads, harmony leads. Oh my god, you know, I actually feel like I might do something guitar in here. I think I might. I haven't done that since Menagerie. Okay, uh, uh, well, you know, I wasn't, I thought I might have been dumb, but if you guys are into the idea, I think I might do it then. I could just play the lead on with a guitar and then resample it, because what else am I going to do, really? I need to go to FL10, Data, Batches, Mixer, Presets. This is my favorite uh, guitar solo patch. I usually start with it, and then I'll change it over time. I use the EQUO here to uh, band split panning because you can do that, and I think it's kind of cool. I'll turn the shit down though because the compression, my god. Four. Hey, I'm even in D. How cool is that? My guitar's already tuned. <clears throat> hey, you know, Slayer is pretty shitty, but when it when it when it first happened, it was like the greatest thing that I've ever seen. It was like what made me want to get FL4, because it had Slayer. Right, tuning guitar. For the record, Slayer is awful. Slayer is just the worst. Although, because because we're talking about it, I'm gonna go find you um, some of my oldest tracks where I made using nothing but Slayer. All right, you're about to die. Uh, what track should I show you? Um, Stomper. That's what it's called. <laughs> I have Stomp and Stomper. Oh God, this is terrible. Ready for this? Here's that. Here's. This is going on YouTube. It's gonna be awful. This is old. This is like eight years old.
I'm done. I'm done with that. That was before I knew anything about anything, and I I just knew that FL had at Slayer, and I was like, I need. I want guitars because I didn't have a guitar, and I played one. Jesus. I lost my pick. Here's my pick. Here's wow. I have two picks. They multiplied. <sighs> Mm, all right. Let's learn this lead line. So not not the harmonized one, but the real one. So D. This is that high? Oh my god. that uh. already fucking up I really want to do should probably use the other picture are old and sliding hurts. The problem with real instruments is that you have to actually know what you're doing. Alright. I'm gonna make it very I'm gonna make various attempts. This one was pretty good. Now let's see what I can do with that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to denoise it. Remember how I was talking about denoising earlier on my voice? Well, this is how you do it. You grab a section of audio in Edison that looks like it's all noise, like this is, and you right click this button. It's a toothbrush. You right click it, and it gets the noise profile. And you click on it, and you get various denoising options. And it basically removes those frequencies from the track. It's processing. Processing. Bam. Most of the noise is gone. I actually recorded the clean guitar, like the actual dry guitar sounds, so that I could uh, have total control over the tone should I decide I want to change it. might be shitty, but that's okay, because I can fix it in post. Hello. That was an interesting little visual glitch. Scatter by Nero. That's good. All right. Play! Play, you fool! I can stay there. Uh, not so much del uh, delay, I think.
All right, go side chain. Let's put you in the chorus. Let's see how this sounds. <laughs> I gotta listen to that at full volume because that's this is this is becoming a mixing thing. So BRB with voice. What? Oh yeah, I opened up the. Yeah. Okay. That's okay for now, I guess. So it turns out that sounded better being an octave higher with the guitar, and uh, I don't think we recorded it, so I just pitched it up. And that works okay, because it being actually a guitar, originally, means that pitching it up and down like that, uh, you keep the elements that make it sound like the actual instrument. And because I also, because I recorded the dry signal, and that means that the distortion that's being applied to it, it's still the same distortion. The distortion never got pitched up, but the algorithm itself is still at the right time. Means So that means when we change the pitch, it sounds kind of weird if you listen to it by itself, but because it's mixed in with everything, we don't actually hear that it was originally a lower octave. So that's why that works. Ugh. Does anyone have any questions about things? Oh yeah, so uh, people talk about clipping and whatever um, while it's happening. That was definitely underruns. And that's happening because um, there's a lot of processing, like an unusual amount of things that are going on right now. Um, the, the usual things that would go on during the stream is that I'm processing my voice and it's going into a, you know, a thing, and then XSplit is dealing with itself and it's streaming, which can, be, can cause issues. And the addition, the addition of Guitar Rig is what sent this project over the edge, because remember, the lead is a patcher that has two harmers in it, which 
and like you know some routing and shit like that. And I doubled that to have a harmonized a harmonized section of it going on there. So that's why this section is a bit is a bit chunky. But that's what that is. And it really only matters if I'm like moving while it's playing. <laughs> And it gets a little weird, and the, you know the way to fix that. I'm, I'm using an I'm using an uncommonly low uh, buffer, like 14 milliseconds total is like what I would I used to get on my older computers when I like had nothing running and I wanted to have immediate playback on my guitar because in order to run all the sounds and shit, I had to be at like 30 or like 40 ms for it to actually process the sounds. I turned on triple buffer. This is a sort of a an emergency measure. My usual is nine milliseconds. And I'm I'm running. What am I running? Should look at what I'm running. Where is it? There it is. 256 samples. That's it. And I could change it. Actually, I guess I can't change it because uh, too many things are using the device at once. I'd have to shut down XSplit probably to get it to change. So gotta deal with that. I'll remember next time, the next stream, that I need to do that. I need to make that work. Anywho, we've been actually been doing this longer than the actual show is supposed to be, so um, I'm going to call this a day. But we we got pretty far. We got like a sort of an intro um, structure. I'm not know I don't know how much I'm going to like to keep the intro, but I like the song a lot more than I did earlier, mostly because of the addition of the melody. Uh, that was important. That's good. Um, the drop. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know what's up with anything that's going on here. Um, so who's got questions? Let's ask some questions before I kill things. We've got questions. I'm sure someone's got questions. Daw, you guys are nice. Bansky Pie's got questions. What's up, Bansky Pie? Potato King asks if I love him, and I do. I love you. Uh, Zypriax, uh, Zypriaxa, Zyp Zypriaxo uh, official. Oh, Zypriax official asks why. And I answer, why not? Gay Wales asks if I've heard scary monsters and knife sprites by Schism. And I'd like to say that I'm not terribly as familiar with Schism's body of work as a whole, so I guess that's when I missed. Banksy? Banksy? The wave makes it look cleaner. How do you make it faster? I, I can just up the tempo. I'm not totally sure what your question is. Explain yourself. Uh, for underrun stuff, the smart disable all plugins. I could do that. I do enjoy sandwiches. I haven't had sandwiches in a while, but I do like them. Uh, what about Clarity by Knife Party or Levels by Swedish House Mafia? <laughs> I don't listen, listen to a lot of music. Banksy, you're not doing a good job of explaining what you mean by your question. I'm never going to shave off my beard. There's always going to be some beard. I look extremely stupid without a beard. So there's always going to be some beard. What are my thoughts about producing with limiter on? Okay, 2010... Colin D. Colin asks, what's my thoughts about producing with limiter on? And you, you, you know that I already have master compression on this chain, right? Like, the, the, reason, the reason why I do that is so that I can, I, I basically already know what the tracks going to sound like with mastering. There was an article uh, some, somebody wrote uh, that someone else posted on the EDM production Reddit, and it was called an article about schmastering. And this is pretty much what I call what, what this is. is I schmaster everything so that I have a, a sort of a, a vision constantly of what things sound like. And so, like it, you know, it, the traditional way of doing of doing a mix is that you make your mix, your pre-master mix, and you have it like at minus minus six dB. You have your peaks there anyway, and um, you kind of you kind of make the mix fit as well as you can, and like it makes it sound to it sound good, and then you master it. The problem with that though is that. Unless you're, unless you're just so good at that and you've done it for so long, you're not going to know what the master is going to do to your track. And then you do it, and then you're like, oh, I have to go back and change this level, make the kick louder, make the kick quieter, make this louder, make this softer. So if you just do it from the get-go, you will know these things. And then when you're super done with the track, you, you know, do a better job. 
is, 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 that's my sort of that's my method. <sighs> Dylan Sound asks if I'm glad he's there, and the answer to that question is hell yes. Mixed ring. Okay, the sound wave, when I work on stuff, the sound wave is like slow and yours is clean. If I use ASIO, no sound comes out. I can make it faster, but it clips like hell. Oh, you were talking about, okay, you're talking about um, the buffer. So yeah, when you, have a, when you have a high buffer, which I can't show you because it'll kill the stream, but when you have a high buffer, um, all, the, all the feedback stuff, like the, uh, the, the stream up here and this stuff, like it's, it's slower because it takes longer to process uh, each sample it's doing and it's delayed a little bit so then that so that the feedback is actually slower and if you turn down the buffer if you turn the buffer level down which uh, like you, you turn on ASIO and that's what I'm using now but if, you, if this wasn't here um, actually I could just do that if this wasn't here you get this and then if you, you change this to be higher or lower like you're, I'm already getting on the runs Let's see if I See that? That's a really slow, slow wave. But if I bring it, bring it down, it's, it's killing itself because it's not gonna be as good as the IS, ASIO version. It's a little bit better. But then if I go back to the actual driver, so that's why that's why it's faster. It's because I have a much lower uh, buffer, and the reason why I'm able to do that is because my computer's monstrous. Um, people doing math. Gay Wales asked me to, to name the quadratic formula off the top of my head, and you didn't form that in the, in the shape of a question. So, no. Have I ever used new tone? Uh, yeah, I haven't really. I mean, I usually I use it for its purpose, which is to correct vocals and stuff. But I don't really work with vocals very often, and um, I have uh, sometimes tried to use it like with like a guitar line, like the line I just did. Like I would put it in there, like like that. But there's too many other sounds in a guitar line that kind of it kind of fucks with its algorithms. So it's not necessarily a good, a good fit. Okay, ASIO, I forget what, um, I really don't remember what it stands for. ASIO is a, is a, like ASIO for all, like the drivers that you get in, um, like, you know, when you install FL, that's, it's like synthetic ASIO because ASIO drivers are designed to work with ASIO hardware. And like I have an I have an external sound card, which is weird to call it that because it like calling that thing a sound card is a bit of a misnomer. It's a it's an audio interface, which is is what that sort of thing is for, and it's dedicated processing hardware. It's like it's like getting a GPU or a video card for your computer. Like you know, video games are run better when it has dedicated things, a de dedicated hardware processing for it, as opposed to using the CPU, which is a generalized processing unit. GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. APU stands for Accelerated Processing Unit. That's, um, or something like that. But uh, point being, dedicated hardware makes things go better. And so, you know, video card, better video games. Sound card, better audio stuff. And pretty much the only, like, you know, this, this stuff that, we're, that I'm doing, like, you know, having lots of audio files and effects and crap like that, this is like the highest end level of, audio processing because like sound cards we're like get this, this x5 sound blaster for video games like that is you do not need an audio interface for video games like this sort of stuff is the only thing you need an interface for is high level processing for recorded recording audio or you know audio editing kind of thing uh poopa doopa Ugh. audio stream input output that's i guess what that stands for okay people are asking a bunch of Weird technical questions. Uh, JS313 asks, how do you get third-party plugins to do the FL uh, piano roll legato portamental? I'm, th I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you mean slide notes. And the answer to that question is you do not. And there's two reasons for this. One is the it works with FL plugins because it's not a MIDI, strictly a MIDI uh, signal. And the other reason is, is that um, it's apparently a thing that can be supported in VST3. Most plugins are VST 2.2, 2.2, 2.3, 2.1. 2 
And um, the VST3 plugins that there are are just ports of VST2 plugins, which do not take advantage of these of newer features, like being able to do slide notes and piano roll, stuff like that. So that's that's more or less, it's, it's a developer thing for third-party plugins. And then also it's a developer thing, developer thing for FL in a larger grand scheme of things, but that's the reason they give. Do I play Halo 4? I do not. Galaxy S4 or iPhone 5? And my answer is this. This is my phone. Mm, but I would say Galaxy. James Brio asks if, uh, what can I recommend in a laptop? And I recommend not a MacBook. Or if you get a MacBook, I recommend that you bootload it with Windows, Windows 7. Not Windows 8, Windows 7. Uh, will I release something? When will I release something on Monster Cat? Don't know. Can it show us what, our, what your desk looks like? I actually have a picture of my desk on my Facebook page, which, by the way, is slash official seamless now, not seamless R, because I am not seamless R anymore. I am seamless. I can't change that on Justin TV because that's my account name, but um, just so you know, it's slash uh, official seamless. And my SoundCloud is slash seamless official. Yeah, because that's not confusing. See, that, those, are the, those are the things I wanted to avoid when I made my name Seamless R, because I could make everything Seamless R, and it was really easy to do. But Seamless R, saying that out loud sounds extremely dumb. And that's why I basically never say it. That's why I'm always like, hi, I'm Seamless, because I'm Seamless, damn it. I'm Seamless. Can I do some turntable stuff? You know what? Sure. Let's do some turntable stuff. You're going to be really sad you suggested that. You happy now? <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Um, I do have that one DJ DJ controller. You can probably see it. It's over there. That thing. That's a. Uh, the Behringer CMD Studio 4A, which I did a mix with exactly once because I have, I'm not a very good DJ. I'm not good at DJing. I've never done it. It's not something I'm, I'm good at, so I'm you know trying to do it. Dylan Sound asks, FM8 or Citrus? And my answer is Citrus. Duh. Banksy Pi asks if I can release my last FLP on the last live stream. If I won't use it, which FLP is that? This is this one, isn't it? Are you talking about my dubstep track, the new one? No, no, I'm not releasing that. Not anytime soon, anyway. Hmm. Have you been offered a record label? Yes. Have I been offered to be on one? Yes. Have I been offered one? Like, hey, can you own my record label now? No, I have not. I think I'm. I think this is good. This is we're getting into sort of general purpose questions. So this is what the track is so far, and I think what I'll do is I'll not touch this again until the next stream. And we'll see how that goes. I don't even know what I'm gonna, I would do with this track. I might just give it away. I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, so today's been nice. I have super appreciated you guys being here. And so remember, this is a weekly thing. Every week, every Saturday at, um, you know, 6 p.m. EST. And boy, that video's laggy. That is some, that is some lag right there. My computer's not having a good day. Is it trying to update something? I don't know what. I don't know what. But yeah, that's what's up. Thanks for coming. Yay. Later.